starts here. Universal quote for Victoria. Same price for North and South Victoria. Is uh, apart from the southwest extremes out near uh, Portland or far south, southeast, such as uh, Lakes Entrance, because um, the rebates increase the further north we go. So that accounts for travel and accommodation if I have to work outside of Melbourne. So this video will be a universal quote, except for crazy things like crazy roofs, two story, 45 degree, etc. Et but for a standard uh, single story house, this will be the norm. We're gonna start with the inverter. We're gonna go with the NOARC. Now, let's look at this, page four. It has all the bells and whistles, obviously. All the inverters have clouds and monitoring so on. Uh, it does backup loads, it does off grid, it does on grid, it's have a generator, you can have another grid connected inverter with it. Uh, smart loads, uh, excess power can turn on and off a smart load, such as preferably a hot water service. Um, it's got solar input, it's got only two trackers. I'd say the only thing that other inverters might have on this is maybe three or four trackers. And of course you've got your battery connection. This is rated for not only hybrid, which is uh, backup loads, and battery for self-consumption. Self-consumption means don't export it to the grid, fill your battery and then use your battery at night and cut out the grid. Because as you know, export is a lot less, a lot, lot less than import rates. So that's a uh, money saver there. So very universal. And just on a note, the grid connected inverter here, running on the backup side, goes into the same input as the, either the smart load or the generator. You can't put both of these in the same input. But what you can do, if let's say I'm using an existing grid connected inverter in this input, well then the generator can go on the grid, pretend to be a grid. In other words, cut and paste that where that grid is and it will still work. So a lot of features. And just another note, you it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So you cannot have a bigger grid connect inverter than the rating of your hybrid. No arc inverter. However, these inverters have one other special feature, and that, that is if I say put another six kilowatt single phase no arc inverter with a existing six kilowatt no arc inverter, you can connect them with a data cable and they'll add up to 12 kilowatts. So it'll act like a single 12 kilowatt inverter. Same with the three phase models. That means your backup loads can be joined together from each inverter through one circuit breaker and get twice the capacity in off-grid or backup load. So that's been said and done. We'll move along. So I'll close that. Here's their webpage in the link below. Uh, this is also branded as another brand called Dye, or D-E-Y-E -E is how you pronounce it. Uh, this one has different software in it, being a different uh, brand. And this one ha has Australia, mainly caters for more Australian conditions, uh, so very suited. And speaking of Australian, I'm going with this battery, Power Plus. That means support, meaning if you upgrade in years to come, well, they can just make a battery and send it out there to match the back brand of battery that you bought today. Very convenient, and the price is only a few percent more than the imported models. So we're going to have a look at this. Now, the, the battery we're going to use is this one. It's the latest model. This is a later technology, and this warranty is much longer. It's a 10-year warranty, and provided you go with this chart, you'll be covered. And it's uh, the main difference in warranty is these older models will give you a warranty for 60% capacity after 10 years. This one will give you 80% capacity after 10 years. So if I go with a 12 kilowatt three phase model of um, NOAA converter, I will need a minimum of seven of these batteries to maintain warranty. So we go with this battery, the 4838P, which is a 3.8 kilowatt hour battery. Now on this page, I wanna point out that there's an eight kilowatt single phase and a five kilowatt single phase. They don't have the six, I don't know why, but I'm gonna quote the six because uh, price-wise, there's not much difference between, say, five 
or even four. They've got four kilowatt hour, uh, four kilowatt NOAC inverter as well. So I'm going to go with um, a uh, six because the price difference is not great, but there is a significant price difference in single phase between the six and the eight. In fact, 50% more, I don't know why the eight kilowatts so expensive. And in the three phase, there are modest differences in price, so you just go with the 12. And that's important for three phase, because you could have a, because remember, it's three phase, that means one phase is maxed out at four kilowatts. And uh, four kilowatts is enough to run, say, a hot plate or induction cooker or something like that. If you go smaller, say an eight kilowatt, now you're down to, what is it, one third of eight, 2.66 kilowatts. So now that's not much more than a kettle. So you wanna go 12. So I'm gonna quote two prices, 12 kilowatts for three phase and six kilowatt for single. How to set it up. I'm gonna set it up with one of these. That's where the control will be separate from your main switchboard. We, we don't wanna clutter up your switchboard. I'm gonna whack one of those big 250 ampers in there because that's how much you need. Let's, let's do some maths, shall we? Battery voltages of 50 volts, multiplied by 250 amps, 12 and a half kilowatts. Uh, good, covers all bases there. For it. So one of those will be used on any, any job. Moving right along, and the warranty, as I said, 10 years or the number of cycles. If you smash it till kingdom come, then and put out 10,000 cycles. I don't know how many years that is. Let's do some more maths, shall we? Uh, 10,000 like per cycles divided by 365 days a year. Yeah, it's like 27 years. So if you do 27 years worth of uh, um, cycling in 10 years, it has to perform greater than 50% of its nominal capacity of 3.8 kilowatts in this case. So that's a pretty good warranty as far as batteries are concerned. What have we got else? Well, I'm gonna save a few bucks by going with these enclosures because they use one of these enclosures as their battery enclosure, um, which we'll see here. Now these cost an absolute fortune. And as you can see, the one bottom left is just one of those enclosures. I'll have to build my own buzz bar, but seriously, the price of these enclosures is worth doing it yourself. On the subject of cabinets, this is the one I'm going to get aftermarket. As you can see, it's a PW3, PW4 in this uh, catalogue, and it's IP66 rated, so it doesn't need any further weather protection. However, this one here, IP54, which is probably one of the ones with a vent in it, uh, is not suited for direct weather exposure. It needs to be under a roof. It can be outside, but under a roof, it's the PW... F6WB250, that's it. It's got vents in it, and that's the difference right there. So where are we looking next? Here's another PDF, what is it? Ah, here's the single phase I mentioned earlier. I'm going with the six. As I said, it, it has more sizes than we saw in that battery compatibility chart with uh, Power Plus. And here's some features of it. The bigger the better. Here's the six up the end here. As you can see, it's bigger and better than the smaller ones in every way. You can have these inverters, you can put an extra 50% uh, on its rating as solar power. Obviously that means when you're producing more than six kilowatts, it'll just clip it back to six. But why, I'm wasting three kilowatts? Not really, because the sun is not perpendicular overhead 24 hours a day. In fact, it's only a few percent of the day when you're um, producing over its nominal capacity of six kilowatts. So that's why you always oversize the array. All right, there we've got our two inputs here. Uh, AC output, as, is, as I said, this one's a six kilowatt model. This is my single phase go-to. Forget about eight, it's too expensive. And also has this feature here. What that means, if you do have grid connection, and why use the backup inverter? Why? Why, when you've got the grid? So 40, 40 amps, let's go and have a look at the three phase. I'm gonna be doing the 12 for the same reason as I'm doing the six. And as usual, the array can be 50% bigger than its AC rating of 12 kilowatt and all the rest of it. It's got a through current of 45 amps and that's per phase by mind you. So you're never gonna be 
uh, doing 45 amps per phase unless you're running pizza oven probably a few of them too if you had an EV ideally if you want to go completely off grid one of these will get you by easily in summer but to get through winter when the weather is absolutely atrocious two of these in parallel to make a 24 kilowatt inverter with as big an array as you can fit with it maximum 36 there will easily get you through winter power your own car and live off grid, no bills ever, ever again. That includes no electricity bills, no gas bills, no fuel bills for your car, nothing. Just completely independent. And uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Self-sustainable, that's it. So now we're gonna have a look at panels. Now, before I begin, I'm gonna talk about Canadian solar. Everyone says, oh, Canadian solar, Canadian solar. So, all right, so what? Let's go scroll down here, zoom in big. Manufactured and assembled in China and Thailand. Like what we do, it's just, it's just a name, okay? I don't wanna hear any nonsense about it. Let's have a look at another panel that I'm gonna quote. This is called the Longy Hymo 6 Y. Look at that, see that? No little silvery lines collecting current from the front. This is a new, uh, very old technology actually, but it was highly unaffordable until now. Let's have a look at the specifications. Two things we wanna look at apart from the power of 440 watts there, is the open circuit voltage and the maximum current. Now let's go back to the inverters. Now this six kilowatt inverter can accept a total of nine kilowatt array. So at that voltage of 39 point whatever it was, you can fit a string of 14 on it, multiplied by 440 watts times two, we can potentially put 12 kilowatts on the inverter before hitting 600 volts, which is a limit allowable in Australia. But we only need to get to nine, so that's easily done. Let's go and have a look at the other inverter with this scenario. Now it also only has two trackers. However, one of the trackers has double the current, as you can see, so it's got a combination of two and one. So that's three. So where were we? At, we were at uh, one string, can do 6.160 and we can put three of them in this bigger inverter and get to 18480 which still is over the top of our 18 kilowatt max so what that means is with this panel we can get to the maximum sized array if need be for example let's go with two strings of 13 panels into this first tracker let me get this right 13 there we go, 26 panels in the first tracker that can handle two strings, plus another 14 in the other. That's 40, multiplied by 440 watts, and you'll get 17.6 kilowatts of array just under the limit, which is what you want. That would be a good combination there, for example. So that meets all parameters. And additionally, as we saw, it was about 13.24, if I recall correctly, for the maximum power of that panel. And it, rate, it rates well with this input. Now this input here is under 13.24, but that doesn't matter because it's never gonna get to 13.24 amps on a oversized array because the inverter will clip it once it hits six kilowatts. That's only for bad weather. And there's going to be a lot of bad weather. And if you go off grid, you want to be, I think I've said this before, you really want to oversize the array because the rebates on the array and you're going to be charging your batteries and you'll reduce the number of batteries that you need to get you through bad weather. And they're always going to be topped up and they're always, and that's good for the health of the battery and all that sort of stuff. So oversized array is the way to go. The critical specification, let's uh, say, look at this six, kilowatt inverter is the short circuit current. You can't go even 25% close to that. So again, the calculator comes out. So 19.5 divided by 1.25 is 15.6 short circuit current. So let's go back to our panel and we can see that the short circuit current here is at 14.3 under the 15.6. That's the critical figure there. I forgot to mention that these NOARC or DOI inverters come in various arrangements. Some of them are high voltage, so I just wanted to double check to make sure these are the 50 volts versions, and they are. They're actually 
more costly in switch gear because the cables are much heavier for these kind of amperages. But at the end of the day, the batteries are cheaper than the high voltage batteries. And these are more easily upgraded. The high voltage ones, you're stuck with the system you buy uh, initially. When you try to upgrade anything or add anything on, it's pretty much, sorry, you're stuck with what you got. Now, I'm costing things not like this. I said I'm getting my own cabinets because these prices are absolutely stupid. Uh, that's a retail price. I don't know what wholesale is. Probably 3000 bucks, let's say. $1,400 less. But even then, it's ridiculous. It's just not even a weatherproof cabinet. The other thing is uh, things online that are pretty good, like this $36 for just this bar with stud in it. Pay over $100 for a name brand here. It's, it's just a bar, for God's sake. So I'm costing things like that into it, but it adds up. Okie dokes. This quote applies for everybody, retail and subcontract. I've deleted all of the cost prices here because I don't want people to know the wholesale prices. Suffice to say, that's the total of them, $29,963 or gear. And that means I've added labor. This is a subcontract rate, 33 cents a watt. Now that would normally include the um, installation of say, a grid connect inverter for this half and a grid connect inverter for this half. So I've left only these figures for off grid installation. As you can see, I've broken it down into two sections, six kilowatt and 12 kilowatt. As you can see, if you're already putting an inverter in six kilowatts, it's mar only marginally more for a 12 kilowatt the economy of scale it doesn't ch change for the array more panels is just more panels now I've done the same thing for everything for example here are the five batteries required for the six kilowatt inverter and another two here to get the seven required for the 12 kilowatt inverter this could be two sixes in parallel acting as one 12 kilowatt on single phase or a three phase 12 kilowatt inverter and it ends up being a total, this is the 12 kilowatt system, 17.6 kilowatt solar array with additional existing grid connect inverter, which is probably going to be 12 kilowatts anyway. So huge array. This is complete self-sufficiency. Uh, what would happen if you had a 12 kilowatt array there? You'd be pushing 30 kilowatts. That would easily charge an EV, pay your gas bills, pay your electricity bills, and never pay a bill again worth mega thousands a year. So... We'll talk about an EV charger later and 26.6 kilowatt hours of battery storage where a lot of the cost is involved. What did it come to? Now this is the Melbourne rebate price or should I say number of STCs. Let's say I change the address up here to Northern Victoria, just an aeroplane, an airport here. Look at that, 170 uh, rebate certificates, an extra thousand dollars more or less off the price. So we're going to go with the Melbourne price, about $1,000 difference for travel accommodation over the course of oh, probably two weeks to put this in. I'm not going to make that money overnight, even though dodgy brother solars will make you think that. When three or four guys show up and shove it on the roof so quickly, it's ridiculous. It's just only worth pulling down again, as you can sort. See, the amount of engineering involved here is critical, and that's why everyone has a crap system and, and isn't paying their bills. So it's got to be done right. And once again, this is all wholesale price here added up. So only the labor component here is shown and total of $37,000 after rebates taken off. This is including GST, because I think it's for a farm, this particular quote. Uh, there's a difference there. Now, that's pretty cheap. Under 40 grand to go so totally self-sufficient with this kind of, these figures, that is subcontract price. So it's available to whoever knows about this. This is a lot of engineering and I'm saving a lot of money on ridiculously expensive cabinets and things like that. I've got to do it myself. In fact, that's, that's a modest figure. Uh, anyway, moving along. There's a $300 inspection there for the Certificate of Electrical Safety. Let's have a look at the six kilowatt system. We've got a pretty big battery array because there was five required even for the six kilowatt single phase. So here we go, 20 
panels, five batteries, one inverter. Now, mind you, this racking is for a tin roof, which is about half the price of the other extreme here. Tile roof is, uh, what, another 30% or so, then this is like an extra 40%, this is like double, because it's got clip lock feet. Those things are nearly $10 each, well, $10 each. So there's your options there. I've quoted for tin roof here. They'd have to be fed in there for any other roof type. And what do we got? We've got this, we don't have that. Um, this is the additional um, enclosure and so forth and gear for the 12 kilo. We don't need that. that we don't need that, that's gone. Uh, don't have that there in the pricing. And all gear still came up to 20,000. $177.50 because like I said, the economy, of your, the economy of scale is much better. And also we've got a reduced number of rebates right down to 72. So that puts a massive dent in the savings. And as you can see, it's not half price, nowhere near half price. See how it's better to go bigger? Bigger is better. And uh, that's the moral of the story here. And this one won't get you completely off grid forever. The payback on this is not gonna be anywhere near as good as the big system. And remember, this could also have up to a six kilowatt grid connect inverter existing system. Uh, most people had a five, have, would have a five kilowatt system uh, grid connect inverter. That would be feeding into that with a, what, a typically 6.6 .6 kilowatt array. So 8.8 .8 plus 6.6 .6 is, what the hell is that, 14, 15.4, 15.4 kilowatt array. You're halfway there to completely self-sufficient charging an EV car and not worrying about saving power. So you're halfway there with this and who wants to pay 50 grand when you can pay 37 grand to go double the size? Anyway, that's it, we're all done here. Last and least because it's not available yet in Australia, but the fact that it will be available down the road, the EV charge is coming. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> scroll, 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 th scroll through a million products here. I'm gonna hit this. Now what this is, it's a kilowatt hour meter that plugs into your NOARC EV charger. And the key phrase is here, the purpose of the DLB module dynamic load balance module, to, is to ensure that the maximum permitted current of the main circuit breaker is not exceeded by simultaneous operation of the EV charging station and other appliances in the building. So that means that, uh, you know, your inverter's at maximum capacity, because it's charging the car, someone turns on the kettle, this thing will drop the power input into the car so you don't blow a fuse. And the other thing is, because it's the same brand, we go with this one, this one has that dynamic load balance, see the D in the part number there. Now this one here, looks like it's got some black screen on the front with a plug. Now that will talk to your inverter because obviously you want priority, you want to charge your home batteries before you charge your car or something like that, yet to come. And I'll close out there, see you later.